Hi and welcome to a new video here on my channel. As you can see, this video will be about the ASUS ROG XG Station 2, which is basically an external GPU box, which you can, for example, attach to a notebook. So previously, I've always been using uh, ThinkPad, ThinkPad laptops. So for example, my previous one was uh, Lenovo ThinkPad T460P, which I used for over two years. Unfortunately, um, I had some problems lately, so the yeah, laptop kept freezing, I kept getting blue screens. I replaced the components I could replace internally, so like a memory, NVMe drive, everything. I tried everything, unfortunately it didn't help, so yeah, I abused the laptop quite heavily over the years, so I think it's, it's, yeah, it's fine. It was time for a new one, so I got an uh, X1 Carbon, which is quite a lot better, also quite a lot different. So previously I've always uh, sticked to the T versions or X versions because you can basically replace the battery and they're quite powerful and yeah, as you can see a lot of scratches on there. I dropped it several times and uh, still works or still worked. But um, yeah, now that the X1 Carbon is quite powerful, it's quite thin, it's very light, you cannot replace the battery which is not that cool, but still battery life is kind of fine with like six to eight hours um, if you just work normal. So that's why I changed to the X1 Carbon. One more reason was back in the days when I got the T460P, I got it also because there is an additional NVIDIA GPU in there. It should be a 940XL, something like this. So it's a quite low-end NVIDIA GPU, but um, I thought I could use it to accelerate, for example, if I'm cutting videos on it or if I'm doing CAD. But then I figured out that actually if you use a normal NVIDIA GPU and you try to do CAD, you will have a hard time. So if I use, for example, SOLIDWORKS or CATIA and I use an NVIDIA solution that's not a Quattro, everything is extremely slow. So I always had to use the Intel solution, so the iGPU of the CPU, which for some reason is so much faster in the CAD programs. So it really didn't make sense for me to keep a laptop with a dedicated NVIDIA GPU in there, which is also fairly slow. So I thought I can just get the X1 Carbon, which has still the NVIDIA, uh, still the internal uh, Intel CPU and Intel iGPU. So we have an HD620 in there, which is fine for working, obviously, but it's not suitable for any kind of gaming. The CPU in the X1 Carbon is an i7-8550U, which you could think it's a coffee lake, but it's basically um, a Kaby Lake CPU based on Kaby Lake. So it's very similar to an i7-7700K, 7, except for obviously power consumption is lower, clocks are a lot lower, but it's also four core eight threads, um, has the same amount of cache. So it's a quite efficient CPU and also quite strong for a laptop with this size. So going back to all my CAD problems, that's why I wanted to have this external GPU box because basically no matter what I want to do, if I want to play some games, I can place a GTX 1080 in there, which is what I did today. So this is a 1080 Strix. But if I want to work with the laptop, uh, like heavy um, rendering stuff, heavy CAD, I can just replace this one with a Quattro GPU and it actually works extremely well. So let's quickly go over the XG Station 2. So it's really easy to use. All you have to do is open the box by pulling this lever here and you can open it and then you can plug in any VGA you want. No matter if it's a 1030, if it's a 1060, 1080, whatever, a Quattro GPU, anything works. Just plug it into the PCI Express slot, um, mount your VGA with a screw on the front and also attach it to power. So we have two 6 plus 2 connectors in here which should be suitable for all common VGAs. The whole box is powered by a 600 watt PSU which seems to be quite a lot. I mean, it should be powerful for all uh, GPUs I can think of. Also, this PSU is also powering my laptop over the Thunderbolt connector. So it's quite nice that it has a little bit more power than just 250 watt or something for the VGA. So we have enough to also power the laptop. Of course, we have all the visual things. So uh, LEDs, um, this thing in front, uh, not really putting a focus on this, but we have also three fans on top, which should be for ventilation, but from my point of view, they don't really help because they simply, they have no space where they could uh, pull or blow away the air. There's simply not enough holes in the, in the top cover um, to allow any kind of ventilation. So personally, I mean, if you have the space, I think it's better just to leave the box open like this and give your um, graphics card a little bit more air. I asked myself the question if there's a difference 
having the box opened or closed. So I ran some Unigine superposition benchmarks. So for the first test, I left the GPU box closed. I ran 1080p and 4K presets in superposition benchmark. The GPU was clocking at 1923 MHz constantly, which resulted in 5930 points in 4K, 12200 in 1080p. So opening the box, giving the GPU a little bit more air, I saw an increase in clock. So the clock ramped up to 1949 constantly in 1080p and also in 4K, which resulted in 12385 points in 1080p and 6,010 points in 4K. So basically, leaving the box open, your GPU will have it a little bit easier to breathe. Uh, it might also depend on what kind of cooler you're using. It could be that actually, if you're using like a Founders Edition, which can um, exhaust the air to the rear, it could be better. I'm not, I didn't test it, but I, I could think of that it would be better because um, otherwise you have just a huge box with hot air, uh, like in this case, but if you're using a uh, founder's edition card i could imagine that your gpu temperatures would be a little bit better but if as i said if you have the opportunity maybe just leave the box open so once you're done mounting your vga the only thing you have to do is attach the power cord attach the box via the thunderbolt 3 to your laptop and then there's a small button in there which you press to start up this box personally i encountered some issues at first i did not know what was going on so basically whenever i connected the box um, over the Thunderbolt port to my laptop, I instantly got a blue screen on my laptop. So I figured out that I had to update the firmware of this, which you can find on the SUS website. So if you get this box, the first thing you should do is uh, update the firmware. Then I was able to detect the 1080 in the device manager. So basically you will not um, detect the box as a device or something in device manager. You will just detect whatever graphics card you're using simply as a normal graphics card as it would just be in a desktop uh, computer and connected to your CPU. So once everything is connected you simply install the normal NVIDIA GPU driver and then you should be ready to go. Again as I said before I still have those issues I'm not sure what it is if you maybe have this box and uh, or other boxes and you also have this problem that whenever you connect it you get a blue screen let me know if you found a solution for it. I did not find a solution for it, so I always have to um, switch everything off, connect it, and then switch on the box, and then switch on the laptop, and then everything works. But apparently, it should also be um, possible to do hot plug. Um, I was not able to do it, but if you have a solution, please let me know in the comments. Thunderbolt 3 is using four PCI Express lanes, so we are limited to roughly four gigabyte per seconds speed. We also have some additional connectors on the back of the XG Station 2. So we have a USB type B, we have an ethernet connector and we also have four USB ports. If you're planning to use any of the additional connectors, the USB ports or the, um, the network connector, you should also plug in the type B USB connector because this one also um, works as an IO port for the XG Station. So you're kind of um, taking a little bit of the bandwidth away from um, the Thunderbolt connector. So we'll, we will not be as limited as just using the Thunderbolt connector. Since this is using PCI Express, we should be able to also overclock the card, which I was asking myself if it even helps because using just four PCI Express lanes, I was questioning myself, is, there, is it completely bandwidth limited or are there some scenarios where we were actually um, benefiting from a like, stronger GPU, let's say 1080 Ti, or if, we, if it helps if we overclock the card? So I opened GPU-Z, you can see this is the normal internal graphics solution, the, uh, the Intel HD620, which also shows KB Lake GT2. And on the bottom you can simply then select NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080. And if you go to the sensors tab, it's all the same as using the GPU in a normal desktop system. And I'm also using MSI Afterburner for the overclocking. Personally, I just prefer MSI Afterburner, Afterburner because you also have this Reva st statistics server Thing. So you, can, you have uh, this on-screen display where you can show all the GPU utilization, uh, CPU utilization, CPU temperature and all this kind of stuff during the game and also during benchmarking. So it's a quite nice tool to use. And overclocking works perfectly fine. It works exactly the same as on a desktop card. So what we can do is increase power limit, which is fine because we have a 600 watt PSU in this box. So absolutely no issue increasing the power limit. And then of course we can also ramp up the clocks of this card. So obviously I did some testing before that, checked how 
high I can push this GDX 1080 Strix. And you can see I, I was able to push it to 2100 megahertz on the GPU constantly and gaming stable. Of course, I did the same testing again as before. I did 4K um, Unigen superposition benchmark. Previously, um, we had 6,010 uh, 6, points. After overclocking the card to 2100 megahertz, it was 6,162 points. So we could actually increase the score by overclocking the GPU, which shows that it's not entirely bandwidth limited by four PCI Express lanes in every situation. So I think it really depends what situation you are in, how high the memory usage is currently of the card. So of course you, might, you will encounter the bandwidth limit um, fairly easy with the four uh, PCI Express lanes, but I think it also depends on the situation. So of course I also wanted to know how this thing performs for gaming. So personally I play a lot of PUBG, that's why I picked PUBG to test. And the first test I ran at 1080p, simply attached the box to the laptop, so using the monitor of the laptop itself. And I had an average FPS of 93, maximum of 104, minimum of 82. So as I said before, 1080p preset, everything on ultra. And now I ask myself, so we're running this box attached to the laptop. So basically the CPU is sending all the data over PCI Express to the card. The card is doing the calculation. The card is sending the data, data back over PCI Express again to display it on the monitor. So basically we have to use the four PCI Express lanes in both directions. That's why I did a second test and attached a 1080p monitor directly to the card. So I did the same testing again, same gaming scene. And actually I was surprised because previously I always heard that those boxes um, you lose like 20 to 30 percent performance by using this box compared to a normal desktop GPU. But attaching the external display to this card the frames increased drastically. So previously we had 93 FPS average in this scene and now we have 116 average FPS and a minimum of 104, maximum of 131. Basically, I think this is what people are seeing. So we, if we attach this box directly to your laptop, you will lose a lot of performance simply because the data has to go both ways and you're already limited by four PCI Express lanes. So using it in both directions is even worse, but attaching the, the display to it helps quite a lot. So if you're planning to use this, for example, as a stationary solution for your gaming rig or whatever, then you should really consider to use an external display and attach the display directly to your card and it, it increases the performance so much. So if you followed the gameplay I just showed you on the top left corner, as I said before, I'm using MSI Afterburner to use the on-screen display and you can see the CPU temperature. The CPU temperature for some reason on the X1 Carbon is always like 95, 96, 97 degrees Celsius. It's really heavily running on the thermal limit. So I tried a lot of stuff already with the X1 Carbon with Intel XTU, if I can lower voltages, increase power limits. There's a lot of stuff we can actually do in Intel, uh, in Intel XTU which is cool. Obviously we cannot touch the multiplayer because the CPU is locked, but there's still a lot we can tune, uh, like power limits and voltages and everything, which we'll do in a, in a separate video. But as you could see during the gameplay of PUBG on the top left corner, the CPU is so heavily running on a power limit that I, have, that I decided to use liquid metal on the X1 Carbon. So in the next video, I will simply open the X1 Carbon. We will take a look inside how this thing looks and then we will replace the thermal paste on the CPU with liquid metal, see if we can lower the CPU temperature a little bit, which should give us more headroom for doing some tuning to the CPU, adjusting some of the voltages, some of the power limits, and I think we can increase performance in, for example, Cinebench and also in-game in PUBG. So of course this video is kind of different from what I'm usually doing, but I really liked um, how this thing works with Thunderbolt 3 and how you can tune things uh, with attaching an external monitor and everything. So yeah, I hope you liked the video. Um, if you have any questions about this, any suggestions, what we should test maybe about it, please let me know in the comments. See you soon.